Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I'll be talking about the insecticidal properties of cobra venoms, uh, specifically in Aedes aegypti, which are primary vectors for dengue, Zika and uh, chikungunya. Uh, so there aren't actually any vaccines uh, to these aboviruses that um, Aedes aegypti are responsible for transmitting. So vector control is uh, particularly important um, and so are insecticides. Um, however, there's growing resistance to insecticides currently in Aedes aegypti. Um, so if you look on the right here, there's a map of um, insecticide resistant um, shown by the red symbols uh, in South America, Africa and Asia. And you can see it's um, an increasing problem in South America, especially uh, there's little data from Africa. Uh, resistance um, is mainly due to uh, behavioral changes or um, increase in um, enzymes uh, responsible for um, excretive and metabolic resistance uh, and cuticle modification or target modification. So, for example, genetic modifications of voltage gated sodium channels uh, that insecticides target uh, in mosquitoes. So, we need new targets uh, for insecticides, and why not look to snake venom? Um, so, this work is off the back of um, a master student at LSTM who identified spitting cobra venom as the most added adulticidal and larvicidal um, out of a range of 35 viper and elapid venoms. So snake venom composition. Um, so the two main families of venomous snakes are elapids and uh, viperids. Uh, viperids are vipers and um, pit vipers uh, tend to have higher levels of um, snake venom metalloproteases and serine proteases which are responsible for hemorrhage and coatherapy uh, and elapids which are your um, cobras uh, sea crates and um, sea snakes and crates um, tend to have uh, higher levels of um, neurotoxic PLA2 and neurotoxic and cytotoxic three finger toxins and dendrotoxins. So also a number of small molecules in snake venoms uh, such as uh, buffers and adenosine and acetylcholine. So um, what's my experimental strategy? To look at what, which snake venoms are insecticidal and the particular component of snake venom that is insecticidal. First, uh, we did a high throughput assay, um, which I'll explain in more detail in the next slide, and tested a range of 24 venoms on early stage uh, larvae of insecticide resistant and susceptible um, ADs. Then uh, we took the venoms which were sh which showed to be the most insecticidal, dialyzed and heat treated these venoms, and um, tested these in later stage larvae by um, bathing the larvae in the venom and um, uh, then tested in adults by adult microinjection into the thorax of um, adult mosquitoes. This was uh, then to uh, see if um, the component of venom which was insecticidal was proteinaceous or a small molecule. Finally, we fractionated the um, um, most insecticidal venom uh, and tested individual fractions to work out the specific toxin groups responsible for uh, insecticidal qualities uh, by adult microinjection again. So uh, the initial screening, um, the INVAP data, which is essentially an invertebrate automated phenotyping platform that collects movies from 96 well plates uh, and converts these, um, converts pixel movement within individual wells into a movement score of one. So if you have more pixel movement within an individual well, you have a higher movement score. Uh, and then you would attribute that to um, um, more live animals and a uh, higher survival rate. Uh, so we tested uh, early stage larvae from Aedes uh, susceptible New Orleans strain and Aedes resistant strain caiman uh, for sensitivity to 24 venoms uh, using this assay. Uh, these are both viper and elapid venoms. Initial results uh, looked like this. So at the bottom, you've got uh, low movement scores and hence low survival rate um, and high sensitivity to these venoms. Uh, and at the top, you've got um, high movement scores. So uh, essentially no sensitivity to the venoms at the top. So um, looking at p-values, uh, if we look at um, the difference between uh, venom movement scores and no treatment, you can see that there's significantly re significantly reduced um, movement scores in African spitting cobras and spitting Asian cobras and non-spitting Asian cobras. Um, 
here indicated by the red dots. So Najma Zambika, uh, Pallida, Megriclis, Nuri are spitting cobras, and then Nigrosomonesis spitting Asian cobra, and then the other two, Nigrosomonesis and Kaithia, are um, uh, Asian non-spitters. Uh, so this is data for New Orleans susceptible strain and Cayman uh, insect resistance strain. So then to further look at the nature of the insectile component of um, uh, venom, we move forward with Naja Mozambique African spitting venom just based on availability and initial fractionation screens. And um, we uh, heat treated and dialyzed this venom and tested it in a later stage larval and adult bioassays. So you can see from the data that non-treated and um, dialyzed venom are not significantly different from one another, but heat treated and non-treated venom are significantly different in this um, larval mortality screen. And then the survival um, curves for adult microinjection, um, whole venom and dialyzed venom do not have significantly different survival curves, but um, there is significant difference between whole venom and heat treated venom. Um, and also, uh, Dif um, not significant difference between a control venom tested bitus aritans, which is a viper venom. Uh, so from this, we could um, determine that the uh, component is protein in nature, not small molecule. So um, further investigation into Naja Mozambique venom. Uh, because this venom is primarily PLA2 and 3 finger toxin uh, and um, contains less of snake venom proteases, uh, we focused on purifying PLA2 and 3-finger toxin fraction uh, from Naja Mozambique venom into uh, distinct toxin groups. Um, we did this by gel filtration and cation exchange. So uh, here we got two neutral PLA2s, two finger toxin groups and one basic PLA2. We then tested um, these isolate, isolated toxins in New Orleans, the insecticide was a susceptible strain and saw from dose response data that uh, if you look here, the uh, the top graph A, the green and red curve, neutral PLA2, two, the second group, and the basic PLA2 showed um, dose response curves that have shifted to the left, indicating um, a uh, lower LC50 for these toxins. Uh, and then you can see from B, the survival curve data uh, for these toxins at 70 micrograms per mil. Um, there's significant difference between these survival curves for the second neutral PLA2 and the basic PLA2 um, in comparison to whole venom. Uh, then moving forward, we took this basic PLA2 and this second neutral PLA2 and tested it in the insecticide susceptible uh, insecticide resistant strain, Cayman. Uh, so that's C and D. And you can see that the uh, dose response uh, curves are um, show that the LC50 is around 15 micrograms per mil less than the um, LC50 for whole venom and the survival curves at 35 micrograms per mil for um, these two toxins are significantly different to whole venom. So um, to conclude, venoms from African and Asian spitting cobras and non-spitting Asian cobras um, have shown to cause significant larval um, and adult mortality. Um, the uh, insecticidal quality of Naja Mozambique spitting cobra venom uh, could mainly be due to the PLA2 component. Um, what this means, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, um, it could be due to the myotoxic or cytotoxic uh, properties of PLA2, so essentially just uh, uh, hydrolysis of phospholipids in cells, or um, it could also be due to the neurotoxic uh, properties of PLA2. Uh, so uh, basically the um, interference of calcium signaling in neurons and uh, interference of endocytosis and exocytosis of uh, neurotransmitters. Um, however, given that the PLA2 uh, fraction of uh, whole venom is no more than 30%, um, it, you would expect a significantly lower LC50 in comparison to whole venom. Uh, so next steps are to test isolated toxins on larvae, to test combination combinations of toxins to uncover synergistic interactions because this um, lower this expected lower LC50 might be a result of lack of synergistic interactions between three FTXs and um, PLA2s or PLA2s and other isoforms. 
of PLA2 and um, also to investigate uh, the exact mechanisms of this uh, toxicity of PLA2 fraction uh, to uh, ADs. Uh, thank you. Um, so yes, I would like to uh, say thanks to everyone at CSRI, uh, particularly my supervisors and um, LSTM uh, vector department and also UCL um, for the INVAP work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Becca. That was really interesting. Um, I will now hand you over to Rohit for some questions. Hi, Becca. Um, so what sorts of experiments can you do to investigate the mechanism of insecticidal activity? And this person's prefaced this by they're asking as a non-entomologist. Um, wait, sorry, the exact, you mean the exact activity of the PLA2 or? I guess, um, and yeah. Uh, I guess, um, so you could do genetic studies in uh, mosquitoes. Um, if you have an idea of what the target of the PLA2 might be. Uh, so you could uh, essentially um, test uh, mosquitoes with mod modified um, targets uh, and see if they are then resistant to the venom. Or you could um, do something like directly on insect cells to look at the effects of, on the cells. Um, yeah, there's quite a quite range of things you could try. Yeah, sounds good. So um, when identifying the target, would the eventual aim to be to develop a synthetic insecticide? Um, yes, I guess you would look at trying to develop something um, that would act in a similar way to PLA2. I mean, if it is um, the neurotoxic effects, then you could look at like different phospholipids that maybe might um, have neurotoxic effects on uh, neurons in insects. Um, but yeah, mainly this would be a, used as a tool to identify target, like new targets rather than um, directly using PLA2. If that answers the question, I'm not sure. Right. Um, have you got any plans to investigate other routes of administration? Um, not me personally, but um, I mean, you would have to figure out um, ways to like mobilize the toxin um, and also mass produce it uh, because the reason why you do micro injection is because you can't do, um, you can't really produce an environment where it's sort of on the surface of, of something that mosquito touch, mosquitoes touch. So you would need to. Um, either mass produce the, the toxin by sort of um, gene genetic engineering or yeah, uh, to I, I think it's like maybe a way off that um, I can't really answer about how you would deliver it to mosquitoes at this point. That's all right. Um, so also, have you looked or thought about um, selectivity between different insect species? So a lot of um, issues with the current insecticides, uh, the neonicotinoids especially, are there unwanted effects against honeybee populations? So is this something that you've looked at or thinking of looking at? Um, no, I've not looked at it uh, directly. Um, but yeah, I guess that would maybe first you'd have to identify what it's targeting, so what the PLA2 is, is targeting, and then look at uh, homology between the target and that in, in Aedes mosquitoes um, in comparison to uh, honeybee um, targets, the, the homologous protein in honeybees, um, and then sort of try and determine whether you think this toxin would affect honeybees or not. Um, yeah. No, I've not looked at it. And uh, last, lastly, um, how stable are these PLA2s? Because once out in the environment, they've got a lot of like, temperature and light to contend with. So do you reckon they, currently they could hold up or do you need to sort of create this 
better synthetic version but increase uh, I mean I think you'd probably have to make something that was a bit more stable but um, they are pretty stable I mean they're quite they've got a lot of like disulfide bonds and things um, and you you can't you do have to heat them until for like 15 or 20 minutes um, at 90 degrees to stop um, to sort of eliminate the effects of the venom on mosquitoes so I assume they were quite stable from that um, but yeah you, you probably would have to engineer them you know for optimization okay yeah that's time thank you very much I'll pass it back to Charlotte Okay, thank you so much to all our presenters. We have come